Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey. This is another A-level maths tricky question. Today we're doing mechanics. This is from June 19. This question has a nine marker in it. Ugh. And if you do find this useful, please do subscribe to the channel. Please do like and share and have a go at the question. And here is the solution. Okay, lots of um, information at the start. I'll let you read that. I'm gonna skip through it and get to the good part. And that is the question, and part A says, explain why the reaction force from the drum on the ramp at point C acts in a direction which is perpendicular to the ramp. Okay, so in order to um, explain this better, what I'm going to do is zoom in on the... Um, and uh, normally we would have a reaction force of a surface which would be perpendicular to the um, rod and we would also have a frictional force uh, but in this case because the ramp or sorry the um, the drum is completely smooth there's going to be no frictional force which means the only force acting on the contact is the reaction which goes perpendicularly upwards so no friction means reaction force is perpendicular Right, now I'm going to just draw all my forces on because whenever I have a, a diagram like this, I want to draw as many forces on as possible. I'm going to draw on the weight and that was 20 grams. Sorry, it's 20 kilograms, so 20 G is the weight. And that, that acts in the midway point because the rod is uniform. And we're also going to have a reactional force where the rod hits the ground. I'm going to call that R. And with that, because the ground is rough, we are going to have frictional force, which is going to be holding the rod in place. So it's going to be pushing it towards the right because the rod naturally wants to slip downwards. So the frictional force is keeping the equilibrium. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take components of my um, forces. So I'm going to draw a dotted line perpendicularly down from the rod. And I'm going to then draw a dotted line across, um, which uh, starts at the end point of the red one and ends at the end point of the blue one. And that angle in there is always going to be the same as the slope. Um, the angle uh, that the weight makes is always going to be equal to the slope. And because the red line is adjacent to the angle, that will be 20 g cos. And because the green line is opposite the angle that will be 20 G sine and now what I'm also going to do is draw some components of the uh, normal reaction uh, I call that N uh, where C meets the rod so I'm going to draw a dotted line directly upwards and then I'm going to draw a uh, another dotted line uh, directly across and now we need to work out what that angle is uh, in that little gap there um, and I can just show you why that angle will be theta if I were to draw a horizontal line across like this then by alternate angles or z angles that angle in there would be theta uh, we can see that because we make a z if I were to highlight like that and that means that the next angle along um, would be 90 minus theta because it's a right angle between the rod and the normal. And that means that that angle in there would be theta. Okay, so great. Now what I could do is I could label the uh, red dotted line as N cos theta, because it is next to the angle. And I can label the green one as N sine theta, because it is opposite the angle. And that is our force diagram complete. It's so important that you draw a good force diagram. It makes these questions so much easier. Right, the question asks, what is the magnitude of the resultant force acting at the ramp A? So I need to work out R and F, essentially. And these questions are very similar. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take moments at A. moments at A and I'm going to do that because that will cancel out R and F which means I will get an equation which has only one unknown which will be N which means I can solve for N. So taking moments at A will cancel out two of my unknowns which is very helpful. 
Okay, so the distance along to the first force is 4, because it's halfway along the rod where the weight acts. And the perpendicular force to the rod is the 20 g cos theta, which is the, um, the pink or the, or the red line going down, because that's perpendicular to the rod. And that's going to be equal, because that's the clockwise moment, to the anti-clockwise moment, which is 5 along the rod, and the perpendicular force is just n. That's the one that works at right angles to the rod. Okay, and now that means I can rearrange for n to get 4 times 20g cos theta over 5. And I forgot to mention that um, you're given the angle. Well, you're given tan of the angle at least. And when I get given um, uh, the angle in trig form, I draw a right angle triangle with um, the angle theta in one of the corners. And because we've got tan here, uh, 7 over 24, 7 is the opposite and 24 is the adjacent. And by Pythagoras, I can work out that 25 must be the hypotenuse. Now I've got all three sides. I can write that cos theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And I can write that sine theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. And I have an expression for cos and sine without having to use my calculator, which is really helpful. Okay, I can work out what this is um, using my calculator. I can sub in uh, that. I can evaluate that expression and I get 150.5. So 150.5 is my value for n. And then next I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to resolve horizontally. Now, these questions, like I said before, they're very similar in their nature, even though they might look completely different. The first thing you need to do is take a moment, because moments are very useful for cancelling out forces you don't know. And then once you've done that, the next two steps are to resolve the forces horizontally and then resolve the forces vertically. So many of the questions involve these three steps at some point. So, let's do Let's resolve horizontally. So what forces have we got going horizontally? Well, we have um, F pointing towards the right. And that must balance the other horizontal force, which is pointed to the left, which is N sine theta, right at the top there. Okay, great. We know what N is, and we know what sine theta is. So we just literally multiply the two things together. Sine theta is 7 over 25. And we get expression for... Uh, the force F, which is the frictional force acting horizontally at A. So this will be 42.1. And then next we resolve vertically. And we are, uh, we have R going directly upwards. And we also have N cos uh, theta in red at the top there that's also going vertically upwards and that must equal all of the forces going vertically downwards which is the blue force in the middle which is just 20 G and that means that R is equal to 20 G minus N cos theta and we know that N cos theta is 150 N multiplied by cos theta which is 24 over 25 and this as well can be resolved and we get 51.5. Okay, we are so nearly there. Um, next, we just need to look at the forces happening at A. We've got a horizontal force, F, of 42.1. And we've got a vertical force of R, 51.5. So the resultant force will be the, um, uh, the force which which includes both of these two, and we find this using Pythagoras' theorem to find the magnitude of that force. So we just square the two components, the horizontal and the, and the vertical, and then we add them together, and then we take the square root. And this will give us a value of 66.5 newtons. Fantastic. Okay, the final question. There's your nine marks, but the final question says uh, the ramp is still in equilibrium and the ramp is now not uniform, which means the centre of mass is not in the middle. And it's saying the centre of mass is closer to A than it is to B. 
What effect would this have on the normal reaction between the ramp and the drum at C? Well, let's imagine then if it wasn't, the weight wasn't happening in the middle, it was happening closer to A. Let's imagine it was two um, meters along rather than four. So I'd put a two there. And then let's go back to our moments at A. And this calculation would now change. We, to work out the clockwise moment, we would do two times by the, um, the, the cosine component. And that would still equal five times N because N has not changed its position. And that means that five N is less than it was before, which means that N must be less than what it was before. So N will have decreased if we move the center of mass closer to part A, uh, to point A, sorry. Okay, I hope you found that useful. If you did, please do subscribe to the channel. Please do like the video. I've got lots more um, videos on A-level maths. You could check them out over there. And um, bye for now.